Good evening, fellow Singaporeans and residents of Tanjung Paga and Jurong GRC. Thank you for coming. It's such wonderful to see a warm reception like yours. Sudev Chingao Gong Wei. Wan Mian Gong Lao Lo. Mo Si Mi Gong Lao Lo. Tan Siu Wa Ma Si Ai Gong. I Yong Ying Mun Gong Wei. I want to start with a special message to the people of Tanjung Paga. We make history today. This is the first election rally in 24 years that is held on the soil of Tanjung Paga and not on an adjacent constituency like Rudding Mass that the PAP went to. They went to the wrong constituency. You have not voted for your members of parliament for 24 years. You have been denied your basic right. We are giving it back to you. You, Tanjung Baga residents, were trendsetters, brave trendsetters. In 1955, you voted in an opposition MP, Lee Kuan Yew, who then went on to form the government in 1959. You can do it again! Vote us in as your MPs, and we will form the nucleus of the next government that you can be proud of. We have assembled a well-diversified team of candidates, combining professionals with grassroots community leaders. <laughs> Let me start with Dr. An Yong-Guan, our party chairman. He is a widely known doctor with more than 23 years of experience as a grassroots leader. He appears on television very often, Channel 8 uh, and on Channel 5 too, as a specialist psychiatrist whose views are very well sought on what ails society. Next, Shirak Desai a young banker working on risk management in a foreign bank. He is 38 years old. With his experience in risk management, when we take over a town council, we will make sure that the accounting is right, that risks are minimized. He is also a secretary of his neighborhood committee in Jujet constituency. He is a straight A student from RI and RGJC with a master's degree from a top US university. We also have another young master's graduate Melvin Chu, who works in an MNC and understands the problems of young professionals, the PMETs, whose jobs are under threat from foreigners who come in freely on S and employment passes, S and E passes. S passes are for semi-professionals. This pass has been abused by foreigners, or, and they come in. Even people with PhDs have come in on S-passes. Those from China and India, 
they are prepared to accept salaries of 2004, 2005 and work in our universities. This is far lower than even our basic degree graduates are prepared to accept. 3002, 3003 for bachelor's graduates. But these PhD students from China and India come in as researchers in our local university on S passes and they take away jobs from our other PhDs. In A star, yes, I know a lot. A lot of foreigners who earn a lot more, three, four thousand, five thousand. They were told to renew on S passes, but they said no way. But others have stayed on. A lot of others, foreigners from Western countries, have stayed on on S passes. This is an abuse. E they should come in on E passes, not S passes. Next, we have Raf, uh, Rafami Rice, a broadcast veteran and media consultant. He is well known in the Malay community, having initiated a few Malay language programs on television. The PAP team has two minority candidates, but not a single Malay one. They have taken the Malay community for granted. They are shortchanging our Malay brothers and sisters. Imagine no Malay MP in Tanjung Pagar for 24 years. We will give you a Malay MP in this election. Lastly, there is me, the fifth candidate. I worked as civil servant, investment banker and fund manager for nearly 30 years. I trained as an economist at Oxford University. I headed economic and manpower training, planning in the Ministry of Trade and Industry and served as secretary to the late Dr. Albert Winsemius, who was the economic advisor to the Singapore government. He visited Singapore one or two times a year. And each time he visited Singapore, I accompanied him on his meetings with businessmen, unionists, and government ministers. And I always follow up with reports to the late Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. I also work for Dr. Go Keng Sui, the father of Singapore's modern economic development. I was principal private secretary to then DPM Go Chok Tong for five years after which I left to join the private sector, where I took charge of Asia-Pacific operations for international banks and global institutions, heading Asia-Pacific. I contested in the 2011 general elections and president election. A lot of you can recognize me in Tanjung Baga and were happy that we are coming in. We have, I have introduced you to the members of the Tanjung Baga team. The other members of Jurong GRC, I will introduce them at the Jurong, at the rally in Jurong subsequently. This time, I concentrate on Tanjung Baga. And you can see we are giving you a very balanced and competent team. Youth and experience, policy making and grassroots, exposure and experience. This is the theme that will take you forward and fight for your future. We talk about the future. The PAP talks only about the past. They talk about the past as if it was they who give you the past glory. 
they have loved 50 years together as one past. But we have two pasts, not just one. The first 40 years and the last 10 years under the current PM. The first 40 years were relatively good years. But beginning from 2004, when Lee Sien Lung took over, Singapore has been going down the drain. First, he introduced casinos. Then one million foreign workers who take away the jobs and space of Singaporeans, break up our families, and shatter our self-esteem. He gave us the first riot in Little India and the first labor strike in more than 40 years. No riot before him. When he came, became prime minister, we have riots, we have labor strike. No more peace for Singaporeans. Trains break down so frequently that we have lost count. Even the heavens cry over our misery and tears flow down to flood our streets, including Orchard Road in Tanjung Bagal. Do you still to want to vote in Lee Hsien Loong team no. to mess up your life with five more years of incompetence and misery? Kick him out! Back him! BTO! But the misery will last more than five years if you vote him in. BM talk last night about CPF and how you are getting higher interest rates. He is not telling you the whole truth. In fact, the PAP is shortchanging Singaporeans of our rightful returns on our CPF savings. I will explain. The average CPF member gets 2.5% although some will get higher for additional amount or contribution to special schemes. But by and large, the average, most of us, get only 2.5%. Our CPF money is used to buy special government securities, which are then invested by GIC the GIC attained an average of 6% return over 20 years, but you only get 2.5%. Contrast this with Malaysia's EPF, their CPF, which gave a dividend of 6.75% to Malaysians last year but not the PAP government. Instead of sharing the higher return of 6% with you, they kept the excess return of about 3.5%. How much is this 3.5% in dollar terms? At the beginning of 2014, there were members' balances of $250 billion you have put in the total of $250 billion at the end of 2013 and beginning of 2013 they invested. And if all this was invested by GIC, there will be an excess return of 3.5% that is equivalent to $8.75 billion last year. This $8.75 billion has been taken away from you by the government in just one year, 2014. 
That is why the government surplus is so huge and the government is so rich but more than half of Singaporeans do not have enough savings for their retirement years. They cheated you. PM made so much hoo-ha about $500 million being put into CPF voluntarily. But $500 million is less than 0.2% of total CPF balances of $275 billion at the end of 2014. What is this? 0.18% out of $275 billion. So, Mr. Prime Minister, please have a sense of proportion. Do not hide behind selective disclosure of information. They are very good at it. They don't tell you the whole truth, they just tell you something that is in their favour and then distort it. Be transparent, Prime Minister, and publish all information about investment returns on CPF funds. Then, Singaporeans will know the truth and how much we have been cheated of our rightful returns on our CPF savings. Then Singaporeans would vote out the PAP. And we will rise up in anger to demand the return of our money. PM claimed that PAP has delivered on all its promises. Yeah, nonsense. He has obviously forgotten the five C's that he remember, promised us years ago. How many people remove, remember the five C's? Oh, not many. You see? They promised this and they have forgotten about it. They did not remind you. That is why you have forgotten. Yeah, a lot of people remember the Swiss standard of living. But we said he gave us shrill standard of living. You know what is shrill? Maybe no more. In the days when we have pig farmers, they would come around, your leftover rice, leftover food, they will come and collect from you to feed the pigs. So, shrill is for the pigs. They don't give us three standard of living. They give us a shrill standard of living. As Sudev Singh reminded me, I came, this term came from Sudev Singh. He remembers the days of pig farming. What are the five C's? Let me remind you. First, career. Your career has been thrown upside down by the liberal entry of foreigners, retrenchment, short-term hire of two to three years instead of a career. Now, the government has started the trend. They employ you on contract, two to three years. In the past, you are employed on the permanent staff. Now, no more permanent staff. As a permanent staff, you are protected. Um, against unfair dismissal, against high and fire. Now you work on two, three years contract. At the end of two years, they don't renew you, you cannot do anything. This is what has happened to the first C. No more career security. Next, condominium and car, which are now out of reach for most people even we, they take out 30-year 30 30 year mortgages or 10-year loans for cars. And with these huge long-term loans, you won't be able to smell the fourth and fifth C's, which are cash and country club <laughs> membership. So fellow Singaporeans, do not believe in any more promises from the PAP. 
They are not serious. They will not keep promises. They only keep promises for themselves. Their million dollar salaries for themselves. I now want to talk about his other promise of leadership succession. He says this election of ours is putting on a team, a leadership team. Leadership. Choosing the next leadership team. Leadership. But PAP has been saying this in every election. Any election, they say, oh, you must choose the next leaders. If you don't choose us, you'll be in trouble. There is no leadership. Have they been serious and effective in this leadership succession exercise? No! <laughs> they say succession planning takes two to three terms. So we should have key ministers from the 2006 team in the current core leadership team. But the only one from 2006 general election was Liu Tak Yu, <laughs> who has already resigned, not contesting in this election. So he has wasted two terms of on the job training. Money. Exactly, wasting public money. One million dollars a year for 10 years. 10 million dollars just go down the drain to train a leader who has now resigned. Yeah, we transfer. Maybe he was told to go, but we don't know. You know, PAP is very good for Wayang. They exchange letters here and there. So, who are we left with? No more from 2006. Of course, there are some ministers from 2006, even from 2001, even from 1976. A 74-year-old candidate from 76, but they are not in the core leadership team. So, we have only three persons left. Chan Chun Singh. Chuan Ji and Lawrence Wong. They did not come from the 206 team election. They came into Singapore leadership in 2011, only four years ago. And after four years of training, are they going to be your future prime ministers, finance minister, deputy prime minister? Can you trust them? No. What have they achieved so far as leaders? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Lawrence Wong. <laughs> he was in charge of preparing the national stadium for the SEA Games. But the natural glass in the stadium did not grow in time. They put in natural glass. And because they did not grow in time, they had to replace it with artificial glass. Yes, after spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, this natural glass is so expensive. They imported special one, but still it did not grow. What does, that, what does this tell you about their competence and their sense of judgment? So, we now know their true quality. Nothing natural, but all artificial plastic. Actually, the U.S. Congress has, some time ago, after visiting Singapore, I was told they described someone in the leadership as plastic mannequin. You know what is a mannequin? A figure with a body 
and it's made of plastic. Imagine some the U.S. congressman, I was told, compared our minister to a plastic mannequin. Which one? I won't tell you who, which one. I am sure WikiLeaks will expose him one day. Tan Chuan Jin is worse. As Manpower Minister, he is in charge of immigration and he has let in foreign workers very liberally, including foreigners with non-recognized qualifications from doubtful educational institutions. Some netizen call them fake qualifications. And yes, Tan Chuan Jin presided over Singapore's first labor strike in 40 years. He was minister in charge of labor. But instead of giving us peace, controlling the peace, he gave us a little disturbance. PM's confidence in Tan Chuan Jin is so low that he has to ask Go Chok Tong, not Tan Chuan Jin, to lead the Marine Parade team. They say co-lead, but what does it mean co-lead? There is only one leader, no co-leaders. You think Tan Chuan Jin will, want, will dare to tell Go Chok Tong, move aside, I'm the leader, I'm the co-leader. And do you think Go Chok Tong will accept Tan Chuan Jin as his equal? Go Chok Tong is the oldest candidate in this election. He is an overstayer. He blocks the emergence of young leaders. He talks so much about leadership succession, but he is an obstacle to the emergence of new leaders. The longer he stays, well, the worse they get, of course. And the more difficult it is for young leaders to emerge. His presence in this election proves that PAP is paying lip service to leadership succession, which has failed totally. They are not serious. And Tan Chun Singh completes this circus of wayang and failure. <laughs> Has Major General Tan Chun Singh won any war? <laughs> or even a small skirmish? You know, a little bit here and there. Where was he when there was a riot in Little India? Did Tan Chun Singh help or ridicule the poor when he was Minister of Family and Community? This man refused to define the poverty index in Singapore, but instead distracted people with 18 layers of quail apis. No, I didn't know that Kuala Peace has 18 layers. Layers. I thought only two or three, four or five layers, you know? But he has got so much time on his hands. I wonder what he does in his office that he can even examine, he can even tell you that there are 18 layers in the Kuala Peace. <laughs> he even took delight in expensive XO Thai Tao Kui. He tells people about Chai Tao Kui, the XO one, you know. I don't know whether how much of, I, I'm sure he has experienced it. I have not eaten XO Chai Tao Kui before. Mine is only plain Chai Tao Kui. That cost, the XO Chai Tao Kui costs $20 a plate. 10 times, that's true, huh? you mean you have eaten $20? Uh, okay, 
One of our uncles has eaten XO, $20. Good for you. <laughs> 10 times more than plain Chai Dao Kui. I went to Ang Mo Kyo to eat Chai Dao Kui at the store owned and managed by Roy's father. He charged me $2. We don't need Chan Chun Seng to define what a poverty index is. The World Bank defines poverty as lower than half of the median income. With this standard definition, Singapore has 30% of citizens living in poverty. That is why he doesn't want to define the poverty index because it will show so many, 30%, one-third of Singaporeans are living in poverty. And yet someone said there is no poverty in Singapore. That is why they do not want to define poverty index. You know, This 30% is a very high proportion. First world country. Yes, in first world countries, you know what I'm going to say next, is it? First world citizens. Fewer than 10% of people are poor. You know, there are also poor people in first world countries, but the percentage is not high, less than 10%. Denmark, two to 3% are poor. And yet, these poor people get generous help from the state. Just help them. The state doesn't ask for means test. Oh, your father, mother, your brother and sister got money, what? Show me their bank account. Uh, you have so much money, why do you want? You are unfair to other poor people, you abuse the system. All nonsense, all kinds of nonsense to delay and deny help to you. In first world countries, we don't question our poor citizens. We, when they seek help, we give them help. It is already a lot for someone to come to you to ask for help. Don't humiliate them further. Don't give them means testing. Yes, there will be some people who drive Mercedes van and will come to you for $300. They, it's an old Mercedes, maybe he borrowed it from somebody else or whatever. <laughs> there will be abuse. Maybe 2, 3%, 5% of people will abuse it. But we should not allow this small abuse to deny the majority, that's 95% of people who really need help. They need help. Don't look at the 5% abuse. Look at the 95% who really need help. Anyway, this 5% will not bankrupt the country. Under our $6 billion safety net, the amount of help given out is fixed. Even if all 5% abuse, 10, 20% abuse, even 100% abuse, the amount of money that the state has put aside is fixed. You cannot take more than we have provided for in the $6 billion safety packet. So don't worry. Even if they abuse, just pat them on the back, say, well, maybe you need the money. Spend it, the country will not go bankrupt. But if you donate it, you still have some savings, give it to the real poor. All right? That is a civilized society, a first world society. People who do not question whether you deserve help or not. If you come forward for help, we give you help without question. And we don't ridicule you or humiliate you. Question your grandfather, grandmother, father, mother. Show me your bank account. Chan Chun Singh accused our party 
of bribing people with monthly allowances of $300 to children and senior citizens and said this is insulting his residents in Tanjung Baga. Have he and his PAP cronies not been bribing Singaporeans with millions of taxpayers' dollars in the name of SG50? Even this isn't this pretension a big insult to all Singaporeans. If you are going to bribe Singaporeans with goodies, say so. Don't pretend this is because of your 50 years of contribution. For 50 years of contribution, they gave you only $50 for transport voucher. Is this not insulting? We give $300 per month. They only give you $300 per quarter for senior citizens, for pioneers. Our proposal means $900 per quarter. So who is insulting Singaporeans? PAP, PAP, Mr. Chan Chun Singh himself. <laughs> Let me be very clear. We are not bribing people with $300 per month. We are returning to them the money that rightfully belongs to them, but taken away from them by the PAP. Remember my example of CPF, how they cheated you of your returns on your savings. Will you improve the quality of future political leadership if you elect PAP's new candidates? They say in addition to this old, oh, we have other new candidates, you know. But they come from the same mold. Basically, yes, men from the civil service and the military, like the current ministers. Not original. The same old formula of senior civil servants and army generals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what they will say. Will they make Singapore better? Same old formula and all saying yes to Prime Minister. And get more money. <laughs> Nothing original in them. The Prime Minister said the next stage of economic development, of including improving property, is to is through innovation. Innovation. But can you get in the innovation for ex, from yes men from the civil service and the military? No. Have they fought themselves through struggles in the private sector without help from the government? No. They will not help Singapore. They will not make Singapore better. They instead, they will join Brigadier General Lee Hsien Loong in bringing Singapore further down the drain. Another 10 years, another 5 years, another 10 years of misery from the same army generals and the same civil service from the same PAP government under the same tutelage and mentoring from, the, from an incompetent prime minister. Can you get anyone competent when the mentor is incompetent? Current PAP leaders talk unshamedly about honouring the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew and how he is so special to Tanjung Baga. No, cry on stage lah. Uh, even though it's not their father, they also cry. I don't know when their father why they cry or not. You can see this in a lot of the ministers. 
Why are they crying when it is not their own father? Crocodile tears, whatever tears. They are just opportunistic. They have no confidence in themselves. They are making use of the name of Lee Kuan Yew for their own selfish ends. You cry more, lah, maybe your salary will increase beyond $1 million. The more teardrops, you know, every teardrop is a special gold coin. More teardrops, more gold. In fact, they have no real respect for Lee Kuan Yew and have even betrayed his ideals. Let me give you three examples how they betrayed Lee Kuan Yew's ideals. In 1979, LKY warned about having too many foreign workers. He said, and I quote, in 1979, in five years, you will have 120,000 in 10 years, a quarter million in 10 years. Is it bearable? He then went on, but I have a responsibility to you. In 10 years, can we digest so many? There will be cultural, linguistic, social, and political problems. Unquote. This is what Lee Kuan Yew said in 1979. Today, in 2015, Singapore has 1.5 million foreign workers, five times more than Singaporean can bear. And one million such foreign workers came in in the last 10 years under PM Lee Hsien Loong. So Lee Kuan Yew's own son, has betrayed the values and beliefs of the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Another value that LKY stood for is trust. That the government must be worthy of the people's trust. In the past, Trust in government was high, but this have, has fallen very low under the present PAP leadership. According to the Adamant Trust Barometer 2014, only 26% of Singaporeans trust their government leaders to tell the truth. In other words, the overwhelming majority of Singaporeans Nearly three quarters of us do not trust PAP leaders to tell the truth. Trust in PAP has hit rock bottom. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Lastly, the third one. There are a lot of other values of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew that have been betrayed by his own son. But I will go to, I will just mention three. Too many you cannot remember. <laughs> Lastly, the principle of meritocracy that LKY fiercely stood by. You know, what is meritocracy? It means that people move ahead on the basis of their own capability not on the basis of any connections, political or whether you are born to the right family or not. No connections, no birth. Uh, priority over others who were unfortunate to born to the wrong family or to family with to poor family without connections. I use the word unfortunately in a rather loose way. Sometimes it is very fortunate to be born to a poor family, then you know what it is like to be poor. 
and you will appreciate uh, your other your fellow friends and you will appreciate the value of hard work Singapore has prospered in the past because of the principle of meritocracy but in 2014 the economist which is a reputable international news magazine ranked Singapore top five on its global cronyism index what does it mean it means cronyism means that politically connected businessmen are most likely to prosper so Singapore is ranked number five and who are the first four countries First is Hong Kong, you know, lots of billionaires are very close to the leaders, property especially. So Hong Kong is number one. Number two is Russia. Of course, you know why Russia, you know, lots of billionaires also very close to the government. Number three, Malaysia. And of course, you know why with the recent event, with the recent $700 million. And number four is Ukraine. Ukraine. For Singapore to be together with these four countries, where has Singapore sunk to? Singapore comes fifth after these countries. Going by this ranking of cronyism, LKY's ideal of meritocracy has been betrayed under his son's watch as Prime Minister. If Singaporeans vote out of gratitude to the father, they will end in servitude to the son. Do not vote because of the father. You will get his son. And he has son. You will not get the father back. He's gone. But you will get his son. Is that a good bargain or a bad bargain? What has given you? What has he given you in the last 10 years? <laughs> Fellow Singaporeans, do you want five more years of the unhappiness and misery of the past 10 years under PAP? <laughs> or do you want to take back our country yeah. that the PAP has sold out to foreigners and cronies. Will you vote, Singaporeans vote, to restore our nation? Yes! Yes! Vote for change! Vote to restore our nation! Vote Sing Fa!